Hi everybody, thank you for watching. For today's video, we're gonna cover two different builds, but they're actually the same. The one on the right is gonna be without the outer borders. As you can kind of see, the one on the left actually has those outer borders cut out and added. Besides that, they're exactly the same. I just wanted to ha I just wanted to add a little bit of extra flair to the one on the left, but I know some people, you're gonna get tired, especially if you're cutting this out with a jigsaw versus a CNC. So I think they may want the simple version or you can also change it up. Uh, the left is just kind of my thought on how this would look cool. So I recently upgraded my Onefinity CNC from a 48 inch by 32 inch to a 48 by 48. And this kind of allowed me to do something I really hadn't been interested in doing before, which is tiling. Basically what it means is you cut out one section on the CNC and then scoot it farther a little bit down and you cut out the next section on the same sheet of plywood which allows you to use your CNC almost like if it's a four foot by eight foot. See that I was pushing it against that little yellow piece of plastic which was actually a level that I actually just cut in half but you can just use a two by four or one by two any type of board what you really want is just something straight that you can have the plywood against it's very important. All right let's take a look at the other side which uh, there's a jack stand I put up here just to kind of level out the board in the front I actually just use you can either use screws or brad nails and I, use, I brad nail the corners it allows me to kind of line up everything the next step is actually the most important you see me using a measuring tape I'm actually marking mine for each tiling section so I mark mine at 47 inches for each tiled section so you do the front 47 inches and you can do the back 47 inches you can make it 48 to make it a full 8 foot but I find 47 kind of works a little better better with my computer and with my CNC I actually have in the front where the front section starts I have a mark there so this mark that I'm marking right here will line up when I do the next section you'll see in a little bit now really the next thing I'm just kind of getting my CNC ready making sure everything's level everything where it should be my bit is set up exactly at the height that I need it to be put the dust broom back on and um, we're getting ready to start just close it of you who've watched my channel for a while you probably the old cnc box that i had made it was fully enclosed i made this one bigger so i can actually do tiling as you can kind of see it's starting here uh, but you will know since i have the back open it gets kind of loud it's not too loud but i just have my hair protection on there just so you can see that but as you can see it's starting to cut and it's cutting each section and uh, i have it set up in my garage and i can actually open it and you see where I have the whole little setup it's sticking out but um that jack stand it's a great jack stand I got it from Amazon I'll link that down below but it really works out and it's uh to rock well it actually has like little micro adjustments so I can make sure I'm super even because that's a very important fact when you're tiling and you're going all the way through okay this is the operation that's coming up that i really wanted to show you so this is where it's kind of tiling it's not cutting all the way through on this square as you can kind of see and once in a little bit when i scoot this all the way forward to do the tiling of the second sheet you're going to see where it'll finish off those squares and what i'm doing right here is actually just setting it up for its second cutting operation Basically, since you're doing tiling one and tiling two, I have two different cuts that I'm doing on the inner squares. I'm cutting on the inside of the window and then on the outer one, I'm cutting on the outer exit section to cut out the door. And so now all I'm doing is getting ready to tile the whole thing. So I'm actually just popping up those brad nails that I stuck in there and I'm going to see you to see me scoot it forward. And I'm looking for that 47 inch mark that I did earlier. So I do have a little bit of cleanup here. It's a mess. You want to make sure you're staying flat. But um, I do take my time. You can see me. Well, you can barely see. see a little mark with the pen. That's what I'm looking for. And there's a mark on the side that I'm going to clean up right here. But you will see me. And I, all I'm doing is trying my best to line that up. That's the most important part that they're going to line up right over each other. So I swear, guys, this is not hard. I'm literally just going to line it up. I, I've done already a couple of these and this is the most important part you can easily kind of mess this up which I have and messed up a whole sheet of plywood but you really just want to make sure they line up together and I'm triple checking everything because it'll ruin the whole sheet of plywood if I don't but once it's kind of where I want it to be I'll use my brad nails and kind of brad nail it in place and when I created the file I knew there would be spaces where I could use my brad nail gun to kind of hold it in place you can However you want to fixture it, you can, but that's, this was just me. And that's basically it. You're just cutting one section, scooting it a little bit farther down and cutting the next section. I know I was super intimidated before I even tried this and I never wanted to try it with a smaller one because I didn't think it was worth it. But now that I have the four by four tiling, I actually have done it a lot now 
And yes, I've messed up some, so you definitely want to double check. That line is the most important thing that you're lining up exactly wherever you make your tiling section at. If you make it 48 inches, then you put on yours 48 inches. I do 47, and then it just makes it a lot easier to mark and kind of align. But really, get it's not hard guys and I kind of love doing it now I feel like I have a full CNC now even though I don't it takes a little bit more time couple of minutes clean up so it, it's not it's not super easy but it's not difficult at all it's, it's intimidating because you don't want to mess up the whole sheet but once you get that alignment I swear guys super easy and I really just wanted to kind of put a video together of something I think that would be pretty cool to make both sides where you can do the tiling and it's like a bigger project and so I'm actually going to do a couple of these. I think I do four different sections. So all four sides of the telephone booth are cut out with the CNC. But if you don't have a CNC, don't feel discouraged. I'm going to, in the plans, I'm going to put all the measurements so you can actually use all the measurements to cut this out yourself. And you can cut out just a simple plain Jane one I have there. Or if you want to do the outer borders, you can. It's going to be a lot more cutting if you're cutting with the jigsaw, but you can definitely do it that way. And I'll also make it a, a printable stencil. So if you want to be crazy about it and print it all on a on a printer line up all the stencils and then transfer it over you can do it that as well but i think the simplest would probably just to use the measurements i'm going to show you on there that you can do as well so after it's all there you're really just kind of putting it together it's not a big deal and i'm going to show you that right now
So I will mention this was actually supposed to be a three-fourths piece of plywood, but I actually had some leftover half-inch thick plywood that I was, it's just been sitting there now, kind of wanted to make use of it. And I was like, you know what, if I overlay it and overlap it and it'll be one inch thick instead of three-fourths, which it's fine. I, I just rather use this plywood up than just have it sit there and warp. So uh, this really should be a three fourths inch sheet of plywood i just you can do the same thing if you want if you have some scrap wood that you just want to overlap together it's really just the flooring and then i'm just going to put some wood filler in the cracks and you're not you're never going to notice it so those of you who've seen my channel before know that i do have another the original telephone telephone booth box that i built uh which i love it's out of the one by twos and i love the kind of dimension it gave and then i also have a it's a separate roof that you put together uh but i did get a, some requests for like a plywood version and so that was kind of my thinking here i really stayed away from the plywood version you can kind of see it here i really don't like the look of the plywood version and so i was thinking you know what what if i add an extra layer and that'll kind of give it a 3d uh looking effect that same dimension that i have on my original telephone booth that i love and i was like you know what I, I, that's what i'm doing here so you see me adding this on there and i definitely love the way it came out when i started adding all the extra pieces to it and i was like you know what that in my mind it kind of really brought the whole thing together to give it that extra dimension of uh kind of look so it doesn't look so plain jane uh, but again if, if that's the version you want you can go ahead and do it or it's just simpler that way it's also less material to do it that way but um with this one you can just make it the same way or you can add a 3d version that i'm adding here this one has the roof included versus the old one where you had a separate roof uh, but besides that they all kind of work the same um, about the same measurements and everything like that it's just built different this is the plywood version so if you'd rather do the one by two version or you would rather do the plywood version they're both different but if you're using a jigsaw you are going to be cutting a very lot of square a lot of squares with this one So adding those very small letters, I'm actually using pin nails. So those are pin nails that I'm showing right now for a pin nail gun, which I'm, I'm going to show you the difference right now. So there is a brad nail gun, which shoots thicker. I believe they're 18 gauge brad nails. And then there's the pin nailer, which shoots very thin nails and it, they don't even have a head on top of them. Uh, that's the pin nail gun. It's a little bit smaller. Uh, it works perfect for something like these letters because if I use my brad nail gun, I might be able to get away with kind of nailing them all in. But then the brad nail may actually split some of the letters and kind of cause them to crack or break. Uh, it's just a lot easier with the pin nailer. But you don't have to. You can try the brad nail gun. Just be extra careful where you're putting those brad nails to make sure it's uh, on a good chunk of wood that doesn't... A snap so easy.
yeah, hopefully that's enough information. I'm sorry guys, I know I usually go a lot more into detail with the plants, but I'm running behind on some other projects and I keep getting messages about finishing this one. And if I, I probably wouldn't be able to finish this for like a whole nother month. So I, I'm basically showing you how I would do it. Uh, it's, it's not rocket science here, it's just cut them out. You're putting it on the sides, but you can put it together however you feel like it. This is just kind of the box. 